The Piste de Résistance, as they say here in Montréal, we have Notre Dame Basilica, built in the 1820s. Notre Dame Basilica is the belle of Montreal. When Montreal outgrew its second church, this new basilica was built between 1824 and 1829. It was the very first Gothic Revival style church in all of Canada, and also the largest church in all of North America at the time. It is big enough to hold nearly 4,000 people. What was the thinking behind this design? It's very wow. Well, they, it was actually not the Catholic Church, but Scottish merchants uh, and bankers that wanted something really grand for Montreal. And uh, everything about Notre Dame is unusual. Beginning with its name, while there are many, many Parisian influences here in Montreal, curiously enough, Paris's Notre Dame isn't one of them. Oh. In fact, Montreal's Notre Dame was more influenced by Paris's Saint-Chapelle. And you'll see those similarities in one of the most dramatic church interiors in the world, with works of art from the 17th to 20th centuries, completely bathed in blues and golds, with literally hundreds of intricate wooden carvings and religious statues throughout. Every single part of what you're looking at is done in wood carving. On top of the wood carving is 24 karat gold leaf that they've used. Why they use gold and not paint, paint chips gold doesn't. Architect Victor Borgo was so inspired by the style and symbolism of Saint-Chapelle that you'll see the symbols everywhere here too, from those intricately painted columns and ceilings to the fleur-de-lis for France, the roses for England, and that star-spangled ceiling representing heaven. The whole effect is more like being in a theater than being in a somber Gothic church, and that was exactly the idea, all surrounded by that beautiful blue. Huh? So, why so much blue? This is where it gets really cool. Remember how Montreal was originally named Ville Marie? Well, that is of course after the Virgin Mary, the patron saint of Montreal. Now, of course, we're inside Notre Dame Basilica. That is Our Lady, of course, again, about Mary. That also explains why you see so much blue everywhere, from the floor on into the back of the altar and all over the ceiling, because this shade of blue is the official color of the Virgin Mary. So why is the official color for the Virgin Mary blue? Well, because it reflects calm, tranquility, and purity. And there's something else to notice in those blue floors, another Notre Dame curiosity, thanks to clever architect James O'Donnell. So you notice that there's a slope in Notre Dame. He oh, is I the, just yeah. Okay. So he's the one who purposely built the church on a natural slope going towards the river. So there was a practical purpose for a building on higher ground. Ville-Marie's original church kept getting flooded, but O'Donnell turned that hill into a canvas by drawing your eye to that altar. But that's what makes it even more dramatic, like you're yeah, entering into like a, a theater. theater. And these are our sort of stadium seats. You know, sorry, that don't mean to sound sacrilegious, <laughs> stadium seats. But exactly. that's what it feels like. Exactly. That's what it feels like. And there's one more curiosity before we leave Notre Dame. There is only one person buried in the crypt here. A famous church leader, perhaps? Nope, a Scottish-American Protestant from New York City. Huh? American architect James O'Donnell started out designing Notre Dame as a Protestant, but the story goes that the experience of creating this heavenly place affected him so profoundly that he converted to Catholicism so that he could be forever buried within his creation. Thank you.